Moments ago, our guest Joe, an hour ago, it was reported on by Pete Thamel that Jeff Halfley is leaving Boston College, the head coach, uh, going to the Green Bay Packers. In a statement released by Pete Thamel, when speaking with Halfley, he says, and I'm quoting here, the reasons for taking this coordinator job are rooted in both overall the state of college football and the opportunity to work for one of the best NFL uh, most respected franchises. Uh, your thoughts on Halfley going, leaving Boston College and going to Green Bay? Yeah, this is something that's been slowly talked about more and more in coaching circles and just the general college football landscape. It's something that I feel like it's brought up a ton in just non-broadcasted conversations when you just talk to people uh, that are within the industry that we were really aggressively and expeditiously approaching a period of time where a lot of coaches are just getting super burnt out by the way that the current college game is structured. And, and the way that this has led to it where, you know, Halfley brings up this thought of having to recruit his own roster to stay, the fundraising that comes with it, that the extra money you now need through NIL to pay players to come play for you, your premier recruits need some sort of money that's coming with them coming to play for your program. But the biggest part here now too is that the, the year-round nature of trying to recruit is now increasingly more and more difficult where it wasn't, it, it used to just at one point be the, the coaching cycle. There were a few months off that you got to take during the summer, you know, guy, guys would come on campus. They'd be with the strength staff and the coaches could take those vacations if they needed to. That's not happening anymore. That, that stuff's not happening at all anymore where the whole new early signing period has made it impossible for recruiting to be done in a normal fashion you we saw guys like uh um uh who's the the texas quarterback that, that just went to duke oh uh malik murphy malik murphy perfect example backup quarterback on a college football playoff team has to enter the portal because he wants to go find an opportunity while this team is preparing for the college football playoff it is just a a, a, a massive mess as we just spent 14 minutes talking about it in the last segment, and we've spent months talking about it on the show. It does not surprise me that a guy like Halfley, who's in his 40s, wants to put himself in a position to coach for a long time and not have to run himself into the ground. And the crazy part is that 10 years ago, you ask any coach, they'd rather coach in the college game. The NFL is a, is a very high pressure situation. There's a lot of jobs in college football, like Boston College, where you could go there. You get your team to a bowl game, you're doing enough work and you're not going to get fired. The NFL is not like that. If you don't go on multiple playoff runs, you're out the door and your ass is, is looking for a new job. So uh, it's crazy that we're at this point now where things have transitioned this far. And I would not be shocked if next cycle we don't see more head coaches do this and take coordinator jobs. I agree because I'm hearing it from people, Joe, that coaches that don't want to be in college football anymore. I know Josh Pate has talked about it. Our good buddy has talked about it. I've, I've heard it from multiple SEC coaches, multiple ones. They say the same thing every day. Joe, we've had this conversation. We actually had this conversation about a month and a half ago on here, on this show. Um, can, I, can I throw something out there to you? Is it going to piss me off? Also 22 and 26 as a head coach. Oh, yeah, he's not a great head coach. Okay. Yeah. He's a great no. defensive mind. He's a great yeah. defensive coordinator. He's going to be fine. Sure, the NFL will bode well for him. I actually think he's going to be better in the NFL uh, because he's just more of a mastermind and a play caller. He's not, you know, once you get in the weeds and all the recruiting and stuff like that. Uh, I'm going to call a little bit of BS. I will admit that there are a lot – talk to him daily. There are a lot of coaches that don't want to be here. I also think that this is a step up for him. And his quote in saying that, let's just call it what it is. It's horseshit. It's better to be the D.C. at Green Bay than the head coach at Boston College. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. he could have just said that this is an opportunity that I don't believe that I can pass up and leave it there. He's using this as, as an excuse to his players and everybody else around him. I, 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 I agree that where we're at, He's also twenty two and twenty six. Okay. Okay. So I, I get what you're. I, I get what you're saying. I, I push back slightly. I, I think that you look at the circumstance. I agree, but disagree. 
he clearly at one point Halfley was considered in the first couple of years of him having this job was considered to be a next up and comer. You know, defense coordinator at Ohio State came in pretty quickly, and I think that he upset Clemson in his first or second year, like did some pretty great stuff at Boston College, and then he stagnated, and he took a step backward, and clearly has no shown no signs of progression since then. I think to that point is, is the real reason why he stagnated, dug himself into a hole, and the only way that, that would have led to something is next year he would have gotten fired, and it would have been hard for – him to get a good job, he probably would have been like a linebackers coach or a DB's coach in the NFL or at another power five program. That First part, I don't disagree with, but I don't think he's making an excuse. I like, I don't think he was making an excuse at all. I, th I do think that his stagnation was caused by all the stuff that we're, we're talking about here. Sure. Sure. You're at Boston college. Yeah. You're at Boston college. I mean, I don't, you're not succeeding. I get why you're not succeeding. For exact reasons of what you said. He's not wrong in that. It's an excuse to say that was the reasoning, though. I mean, Joe, if I leave a job and and I say, hey, these are my reasonings, okay? Either they're wrong or right. They could all be right. That is the excuse that you're giving on leaving where you're at. Whether it's right, wrong, or indifferent. I mean... I, I look, it's a step up for him. Yeah. Boston College yeah. is not a place. He, he lucked out. He completely lucked out that he was able look, to get a better job in, in being able our to former colleague. If I'm not mistaken, knows him well. Jay Crane knows him, he calls him the wizard. Like, great defensive mind, great play caller. Sounds great. Remember, wasn't it Boston College? In Kansas, like they knocked out when Kansas was raked with less miles, like I think it was Hathley's first year. They had a really big win. I think it was like it was, it was Clemson, maybe or against Clemson. That was whatever yeah. game, yeah, whatever game it was. I, I, all I'm gonna say, all I would say is, I, I think it's a step up for him. I, you know, who I really hate it for? Who the players. And I hate it for Boston College because now they got to find a new head coach. Joe, we're in February tomorrow. February. That is insane. Well, I, I mean, I think that, okay, for, first of all. You know who else I feel bad they for? Were, Those assistant coaches who now yeah, assist, are likely yes. going to get fired and new staff is going to come in. That part I mean, is effed. Yeah, the, the, that, that part it's, is effed. It's really effed. That's why I feel like it's an excuse with him saying, hey, all these are my reasons, because he's putting a lot of people's jobs on the line. Here's the one thing, though, that I, I will say to that, though. Boston College wasn't really a job. Them. Yeah, unless they promote from within. Boston College wasn't really isn't really a job that would have commanded any of the top candidates. I, I actually don't even think any of the mid-level candidates for any of these mid-level openings would have really been in play for them because of the you know the region that they're in. Like it just probably would not have made a ton of sense. I, I think that they're gonna have no trouble grabbing who they're gonna get. The all actually the only one that I will say that they could have grabbed. Um, who is the guy that the that JMU just hired? from Holy Cross. Uh, that is the only one that I um, would have said would have made sense. I'm blanking on the guy's name, but JMU just yeah. hired Holy Cross as head coach. And Holy Cross was a really good football program for the past five years, which is in Massachusetts. That's the only one that they probably missed out on. Realistically, if they really wanted to, they probably could pluck him. I don't think that they're going to do that. They'll be fine looking for their next head coach. This isn't a program oh, yeah. that's really... I'm not, worried the ACC. About, I'm not worried about Boston College and finding a head coach. They'll find somebody to be their next head coach. They're not going to be head coachless, okay? Yeah. Like, I mean, I'm not worried about that. Well, it just matters if it's a good option. It, like well, them promoting their defensive coordinator is not a good option. Well, not only if it's not a good option, Joe, again, what are you going to tell the OC and DC, okay, if the new head coach doesn't want them and wants to bring in his own guys? And then that trickle effect goes elsewhere. It's just an endless cycle. It's an endless cycle because let's just say, hypothetically, I, I I don't know, but let's just say a coordinator in the SEC wants to finally be a head coach. 
we're not who's to say that somebody would not go and want to be a head coach somewhere like i mean you don't know where this search is going to go that's all i'm saying is it's a really it's an, all i was trying to say is it's an excuse from him okay bet online remains your top spot for all of your live betting action and contests nfl college football ufc nhl are all in full swing Bet online is your number one source for wagering news, odds, trends, and predictions with both desktop and mobile access at any time. Head to Bet Online today and use promo code Believe. That's B L E A V for fifty percent off your first deposit. That is a fifty percent welcome bonus. Bet online, where the game starts.